And thanks for joining us today and happy holidays. It's now time to bring you the feature on the show from the business desk. Now we're looking at the cost of electricity, gas and fuel, which remains one of the biggest challenges for the average Nigerian as the rising cost of energy weighs heavy on the pockets of the masses. Now one of the biggest kickbacks and reactions that have trailed a move for cost-reflective tariff remains in the power sector. The main response is the only excuse for an increase in electricity tariff is better power supply. Now under the regime of estimated billion and huge metering gap, the trust deficit keeps growing between the government and the people. Now for fuel, a bigger reaction is brewing as fuel subsidy is expected to take effect by mid-year 2022. Fingers remain crossed as well and likely as well we've also seen the upward movement of the price of gas so far this year. Well joining me now for much more on this, I have Marco Ilo, an economist. Thank you very much for joining us today and happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays, baby. Thank you for having me. Now, if we are going to look at the year 2021 in focus, we have had quite sharp spikes in the cost of energy. Now, there have been conversations around cost-reflective electricity tariff. We've had uh, at least seven increases in the price of gas this year. And also looking at the price of fuel, we're expecting the subsidy regime to end by next year, mid of next year. That would also put the price of uh, fuel at about 330 to 350 naira on an average estimate. Now, looking back at the year 2012, when we had the whole kickback and the operation, which is codenamed Occupy Nigeria and the protests that follow through, how do we put things in perspective, putting 2021 in focus and then prepping for 2022 when we'll likely see even much more increases in the price of energy? Well, thank you, David. I think uh, 2021 is a part year on many fronts. Uh, it's a year with its own version of challenges exacerbated by the COVID experience. You know, we, we thought we had it nailed down until uh, Omicron came calling. So it's thrown everything up into the air again, and uh, we have to battle it all over again. Uh, talking about energy in Nigeria, I think the, the challenge is, uh, is on a lot of fronts. Especially with electricity, I would say the, the issue is more inefficiency in the system. We are trying to privatize inefficiency. So much as uh, prices are going up uh, uh, for electricity tariffs, you know, how many, how many times this year alone? You know? uh, similar thing with gas. And all these things are connected at the energy level. We need gas to generate electricity. We need gas for home use. Uh, because of the issue with electricity supply in the country, people now rely on fuel more than they even rely on the electricity providers uh, for power. So all those issues, are, they are linked, uh, more like a conundrum as it were. So I think if we bring... Uh, efficiency into the electricity sector, the subsector of it at least, we will have some, uh, some known uh, progress. Imagine uh, all the country generating maybe from Kanye, from uh, Shiroa and the rest of it. Then somebody is telling you bring everything to the, the, the national grid. Somewhere along the line, about 50% of what is generated is lost. So we can say hypothetically that okay nigeria now has about 13,000 power generation megawatts but what we are seeing available to users is about 5,000 you can imagine that so there needs to be efficiency now the the average consumer the users are being built for the power that they have not been supplied and every time the value of the naira goes down the electricity companies go back and jack up the prices of uh, of the billing this is quite unfair, but they will tell you they are in need for business. But it's like the, the average consumer is being made to pay on two fronts. One, you are not getting the power. Two, you are being paid, you are being punished for something that is entirely out of your control. So either way, any way we look at it, it goes back to government to look at their policies, to put the average man at the front and center of their policies and see for ways to make their lives better. The minimum wage is still around uh, maybe less than 30,000 naira. Some states are still not paying. And yet, you have to look at it. How does the average man survive? If we don't figure this out, and soon enough, we have a preponderance of crime, an increase in the level of crime. We are already witnessing it. Even uh, I had your news 
uh, earlier. Mm. It, it's coming in thick and fast, and the uh, government has to see that unemployment, lack of productivity, exactly. uh, on the manageable levels of uh, managing uh, living expenses, these are the things that drive people into crime, drive people into suicide, uh, mm. drive society into, into a state of, uh, of a problem. Mm. And then talking about managing the state of the problem we have today in Nigeria, do you think we've learned lessons from 2012 when uh, we had people forced to protest the hike in the price of fuel and electricity going into 2022, which is the year that precedes the general election as well? The atmosphere is expected to be tense. Do you think government so far has already shown the antecedent that it understands the problem, it feels the pulse of the masses and is ready to take action? The call here is irrespective of whatever increments the court reflective uh, measure we have to impute, there is the room for social cushions. Do you think we understand that element? Well, uh, well, you said it all. I think uh, at this point I don't uh, envy those in government. It's, it's not an easy decision to make, you know. Uh, we have subsidy. It's not sustainable. Government has to look for a way. They've, they've tried to accommodate. Otherwise, the prices of products will have gone up. That's petroleum products. Uh, two or three times within the year. But government has tried to keep it on hold. Uh, that's a sign that they are listening. They are feeling the pulse of the nation. But at some point, if you are carrying something on your hand and you, you are lifting it up, maybe 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, at some point, even if you are the biggest man in the room, you begin to feel the pain of what you are carrying because your hand is in an unnatural position. So I just want government to do a lot of thinking, factor in the social questions, and look at ways of uh, making the, the poorest among us to be able to at least live to see another day, live to see another year, be able to uh, do something for their kids that will take them to this next level. Uh, otherwise, uh, Nigeria is just on the head of the uh, gunpowder looking for problems to explode. I okay. hope it doesn't come to that. Wrapping up the conversation now, in the year 2022, do you think we'll likely be able to silence the noise of corruption and exploitative tendencies we saw, which uh, made the most part of the year 2021 with regards to the increments so far? Do you think we can silence this noise of uh, exploitative tendencies and corruption? Well, it's not about silencing the noise, it's about doing what needs to be done. The institutions are there, uh, but... You know, when you have weak institutions, you need strong men. So it's not like strong men are entirely bad, but the focus should be on the institutions. Uh, I hate to see governors being uh, using the power of impunity because they control resources and the rest of it. The law should be independent. We are all witnesses to what happened under Trump. By and large, there are things even as president of the United States, you can't be seen to be doing. If you try it, they are impeachable. In Nigeria, the, the president is like a monarchy where everything he says is law, you know. It's like, because everybody serves at his pleasure, then they assume that they are loyal to him, instead of being loyal to the Constitution. So I want to believe that the, the president means well, that he will do what needs to be done ahead of 2023, because uh, whether we like it or not, uh, uh, history is back on it, uh, whether it will be remembered for good or for ill. Mm. Time will come. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning and definitely time will tell. It's just a few days to the new year and it's going to be a fresh start. We hope that government takes the necessary steps to stabilize the economy and also we the people take responsibility for proper usage of our resources and also ensure that middlemen in all of the practice also are transparent in their dealings. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. Marco Ilo and happy holidays once again. Happy holidays to you, yes.